In today's video, I'm going to be replacing this drop-in bathroom sink. So the first step in the process, of course, we need to shut off our water. The hot water, in this case, the valve under the sink was corroded in the open position, so I had to shut it off at the water heater. We we'll want to grab a big rag or big towel to soak up the residual water that's going to try to come out of these lines and make a mess. We'll use a bucket where we can, but sometimes you just can't get a bucket in, so you got to use a rag. So just take that line off and move on to the cold side and take it off using an adjustable wrench or if you have the right size wrench that's fine too. Then next we're going to move on to our uh, main drain line. Now the, these old metal lines can be pretty corroded. You might need an extra large set of channel locks for these. Now we can move up top to the sink bowl itself. The first thing we're going to do is use a utility knife to go around the outside edge of the brim of the sink and cut that old sealant out of there. Now you want to make sure to cut into the crack, into the groove, just into the sealant, not down into the countertop. You can damage the countertop if you're not careful with it. Then I just use a five in one paint tool and just get the edge of that right underneath the edge of the sink and just gently go around the outside of the edge of the sink, separating the sink from the countertop. You want to be careful here because most of these countertops, if you're dealing with uh, one like I am here, it's a laminate and that laminate can actually come separated from the, the main body of the countertop. So once you have that off, you can just lift the whole sink right out of there. Now that we have the sink out of there, we can go around with our single edge razor blade and just get the remnants of that old caulk off of the top of the countertop. And you just, again, I wanna be careful with that because you can dig into the countertop if you're not careful. After that, I used a lightweight abrasive cleaner just to get uh, any remaining residue off. Uh, there are some light black marks, I think, just from my putty knife from my paint tool. So that all came off just with a little bit of soft scrub. Of course, as a final step, no matter what cleaner we use, we're going to want to go around there with just fresh water on a clean rag just to get all uh, resi residual cleaner off there and make sure we can get a good bond. You can see here that I did remove a little bit of laminate. Some of that came up with the old sink, but for as old as the countertop is, I'm satisfied with what it turned out to be. Also, this is going to be completely hidden in the end by the new sink. And speaking of new sink, it's time to grab that and just drop it in place just to test fit it, make sure everything lines up, make sure we bought the right one, and then we'll grab our faucet and we'll drop that in. Both of these drain lines just go through the center hole a pretty simple installation uh, overall. Then I'm going to just pull the whole sink out in order to put the nuts on to secure the faucet in place. When you do put your faucet in place, be sure and put there's a plastic plate that goes between the faucet and the sink. Make sure you have that on there and orient it in the right direction. So of course now we can just tighten down our nuts on the sink uh, for the faucet. Both of those just go hand tight. You can put a wrench on them if you want to, a pair of pliers, but don't go uh, overly snug. You can break those plastic fittings. Before I tighten these faucet nuts down the whole way, I'm just going to grab the rod for the stopper that goes through from the top uh, down and operates the stopper plunger for the sink. And just going to run that through and just make sure there's room for it, make sure everything clears just fine. And it does. Once we have our faucet tightened down nicely, we can drop our sink back in place and grab our plumber's putty. Now, plumber's putty is a really neat material. It works kind of like Play-Doh, has that similar consistency. We'll just grab a small chunk of that and work it around to get it you know, warmed up a little bit so we can work with it. Then we're gonna roll it into a log and roll that log about the diameter of a pencil around the bezel that will be visible from the top of the sink. Then when we insert our drain line, we're gonna screw that bezel down on our drain line, which is sticking up from the bottom of the sink. As we tighten that drain line down, that plumber's putty is gonna squeeze out. Then we just take our uh, utility knife or razor knife and just trim off that excess. Now I'm gonna go over and work on the supply lines. And they're a little bit long from the factory, so I'm just gonna trim them shorter. You want a little bit of slack, but not too much. So we'll just trim those off, shave off any burrs with your utility knife, and then grab the compression nut that comes with that. Slide it up on the line, and then the kit should also come with a little plastic ferrule that slides up second to the ferrule nut. And this allows you to use the length, the line's full length, or cut them down some. Then, then that line simply slips into the valve under the sink. Slide that compression uh, ferrule down, and then slide the nut down, 
and simply tighten it down. Now I'm using an adjustable wrench here and when I go for the final tighten, uh, you want to just kind of be sensitive here. These copper lines can take some pressure but not too much. So I'm just going to put a steadying hand on there and like I said when I do the final tighten I'll grab out towards the stem of that valve uh, just so I don't run the risk of twisting the line or breaking one of the copper connections. Next I turn my attention to the drain line and put our S trap on. Now we're going to use PVC for the installation. It's going to be a little bit easier to maintain and service and take apart to clean out uh, in time. So we'll put our S trap on there and then grab our line that goes down from the S trap into the drain line of the house. One thing to note here, the plumbing in the main house coming up from the basement is a one and a half inch threaded fitting. So I'm going to pause the video right here and look a little bit closer and you'll see that I have two fittings, two little rings on the end of my drain pipe here. That's because the drain coming from the sink is one and a quarter inch, so I needed an adapter ring to jump up to one and a half inch. So I can just put that drop pipe on, uh, put my connections on hand tight. Uh, sometimes I like to grab a rag uh, just to give me a little better grip. I don't often like to use pliers on these just because they can be kind of sensitive. Next, I just cleaned up my tools, cleaned up my work area a little bit so I can get ready and leak test what I just installed. So like, what I like to do is, of course, turn our supply lines on, kind of an essential part of leak testing. And just turn those on slowly, cold, and then I went downstairs and turned that water heater back on. And then I like to fill the sink the whole way with water in order to do a leak test. That way it just fills the drain lines and just kind of puts the, the biggest tax on the drain system uh, just to make sure that we don't have any leaks in a worst case scenario. And I like to use a little flashlight and an inspection mirror that lets me see on all sides of all the joints, really get back in there and, and look a little more closely without having to get my head at all different weird angles. I did end up having a leak here. There was a drain connection that I needed to make a little bit tighter. And then there's also a connection on the drain that came with the sink that did not call for Teflon tape, but I ended up needing to put some on in order to seal it up completely. The last step in the process is to run a bead of caulk around the outside of the sink to seal it up and hold it in place. When it comes to caulking, however, there are much better people on YouTube to learn from than myself. So I'm going to cut this video a little bit short and I'm actually going to point you over to Jeff Thorman over at Home Renovation DIY. Never met him, but he seems like a really great guy, puts out some good content and overall just seems like a good teacher. So I'll link a card up above where you can check out his channel. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.